back to another video in our basics of bubble series. Now in the last video we talked a little bit about what bubble is, what it can do and what it's uniquely known for such as its infinitely flexibility, customization options and its huge plugin and template ecosystem. In this video we're now going to start getting into the nitty gritty of how you actually build an app in bubble and uh, I gave you this example in the previous video but just to reiterate I've created this kind of basic app here on a different instance of Bubble and it's essentially just called Rate My Doggy. If you've watched our basics of WAM stack uh, series, then I did the same thing there, created this Rate My Doggy website and um, all it really is is a little uh, repeating data list here of very cute dogs and users can come on, they can leave a comment, they can leave a rating for the dog and that rating will show up here. So we're going to recreate that in all of its horrible, ugly color palette glory and uh, I'll just show you basically how you can not only create a basic interface here in Bubble but I'll also show you how you can use repeating data lists, how you can use forms for workflows and later on we'll also look at how we can make an API call using our usual Airtable demo. So um, when you first come into to Bubble as I mentioned as well you're going to be hit with this boilerplate. Don't worry too much about that for now, we're going to have to delete that to create our own um, uh, rate my doggy page but before we do any of that we're going to start on the left in the data tab. So this is where everything related to databases um, and any kind of data storage in Bubble, this is where it all happens and um, when you first create a new Bubble app you're always going to have this user table by default. If you start off with a template or something like that then you might have a uh, you know more field or more uh, database tables in here but any database table that you've got in Bubble is actually called a data type. That may be a little bit confusing if you've used other no-code tools before where typically type refers to a specific field or column within a database table, but that's just what uh, Bubble calls it. It's just something uh, new to get used to. And so we've got this little box here that says new type, uh, and anything I type in there and hit create is going to show up as a new database table. So given we're doing rate my doggy, let's add dogs as a new type of data. Now, on the right hand side here, uh, you've got this little section that says fields for type dogs. In other words, here's all the fields for your database table called dogs. You start off by default with a creator field, a modified date field, a created date field and a slug. And if you don't remember from before, a slug is just a term which refers to uh, almost everything that comes after a URL. So google.com anything that comes after the slash would show up as a slug if you want to give something a unique name. So for example here we've got bubble.io and page here as a slug. It's just essentially a unique way to refer to this piece of data if you're accessing it via URL. Um, so where we've got a list of dogs we're probably going to have you know Milka, Mocha, Honeybee, all the dogs that you saw here and so the slug would be Milka, the Mocha, Honeybee and then you could probably go to you know ratemydoggy.com slash dogs slash milka for example just to give you an idea of how that works now what we're going to do uh, is just where we usually start in the database table you know we've added the table let's go ahead and explore the fields that are available so if i hit create new field this is pretty simple it's just going to say what's the field name well we'll probably start with the breed of the dog and uh, it's going to give me the option to pick all these various different uh, data types now most of these we've seen before, we've seen text of course, we've seen a number which is usually an integer or a decimal, numeric range is just a range of numbers, um, date, date range, all of these will probably feel fairly familiar, we've got a yes no which you might better know as a true or false or a boolean, a boolean etc, however you want to pronounce it. Um, you can also store a file, you can store an image, you can store a geographic address. So if you wanted to store, you know, specific address information and in something that's a little bit more intelligent than just a, um, you know, text saying here's a street name, etc. Um, we've now got user and dogs and so for every data type or data table that you've got set up, you're going to have um, an option in here. So user and dogs, this essentially lets me create a relationship with the user. And the second one allows me to create, a, create sorry, a relationship with the dogs table that I'm that I'm in now. You also have bubble plugin here. You can store bubble uh, bubble plugins in a, a data field, um, but that's a fairly advanced action. We can worry about another time. 
So for breed, we just want to save something like Samoyed, Pug, you know, Golden Retriever, whatever. So we'll just make that a text type. And you do have this option to say the field is a list. That is essentially going to let you store your data as an array. Um, if you don't remember what an array is, please check out the uh, No Code Fundamentals data types video. Um, and that will fill you in and not only arrays, but everything else we just talked about. So we've got our breed. Well, what else do we need? If I flick back and look here, we need a name for the dog. We need a rating for the dog. And we need a description for the dog. We've already got the breed, which is here. So we'll create a new field. And uh, text, we're going to put the dog name. I'm not sure what you call that name. I don't really like to call it dog name. We'll call that name. Uh, we're also going to have the rating of the dog, and that's going to be a number. Now, in theory, you could make that a numeric range, but I'll just stick with number, keep it nice and simple. We'll hit create. And of course, we need a description for the dog. Um, now, various different no code tools out there are going to have different types of text, like short text, long text, single line text, etc. Thankfully, Bubble only has one. It does keep it nice and simple, and a lot of the kind of intelligence around about how much text should be in there comes a little bit later. You can do all sorts of stuff here, like say defaults. This little button here will also let you leave some notes if you wanted to say, uh, you know, this refers to the dog breed. Then you can do that. That's just useful if you're working with other people and want them to know what a data field's about, or if you just want to leave some notes or specific tips for yourself later. You're the only person in the app build mode that can ever see this, so it's just a way of taking quick notes or quick comments for yourself. Um, so that's some of the configuration options you've got there. Uh, for a rate my doggy table, uh, or sorry, for my rate my doggy app, we probably need to create a ratings table as well. So we just put uh, ratings, oh sorry, ratings in there, we'll hit create. And uh, what do we need in here? So we probably need, well, first of all, we're going to need the rating. So what was it? Well, it was a number. And we're probably going to need uh, the comment. So what was the rating comment that was left? We'll put a bit of text there. And we're also going to need to know what the dog was. And so at this point, we can actually create a relationship. So I'm going to put dog, I'm going to set the field type to dogs. And you can see there, by the way, I mentioned you're going to get a new type or a new field type shown up for each uh, new database table. Clearly, as you can see, faded out in the left here, I've just added this ratings table and therefore ratings is now an option. But we're going to select dogs because we want to specify for each rating in this ratings table, what dog is that rating about or referring to. So we'll set that. And uh, you can see it just shows up, shows up here as dogs, but you and I can know that to mean relationship. And so if we skip along here to app data, then down the side, uh, we've got various options for each table. So we've got all users, all ratings, all dogs. What I can actually start to do here is add information manually to my database. So this is just a database view. It's just gonna let me come in, add a new entry, change any existing entries, although clearly I don't have any yet, um, and do all sorts of different things here just to mess around with my data. So if I hit new entry, type a thing while well, I want a dog, the breed, we'll put Samoyed, we'll start the rating of zero by default, the description, let's just copy it from here, a massive, playful, oops, bundle, oh my god, of Samoyed energy, loves to eat carrots, loves to play fetch, hates to get baths, I've never met a dog that loves to eat carrots, but I got it anyway. Um, under the name, we'll put Milka, under the slug, we'll put Milka, now remember, in your app, you're probably going to have a... Um, you know, some sort of way that a user dynamically enters this. We're only putting this dummy data in here because we're not going to change the dogs. We could put some default dogs in to, to let us create an interface and then delete them, or we could put some default dogs in and then let users add more and more. So, uh, a Pomeranian, I'm not spelling that right, am I? It will do. It will do. Um, so we do Mocha, a very brave and handsome dog. I'm not sure why I'm struggling to highlight that text and copy and paste it so much, but I am. So I've just copied that over from there. Again, this could say absolutely anything. I just want some default data to show you how we put this uh, together. And then again, we'll give that the slug Mocha. Typically you want the slug to match the name of the item. If you were doing like, let's say your database was actually setting up blog posts um, and you had an article called, you know, five different ways to build things on Bubble, then you would probably want the slug to be five different ways to build things on Bubble, and of course the title to be five different ways to build things on Bubble. 
just as a, a you know, trying to give you another example of how that uh, works. By the way, it's always going to pop up this message that says the entry was successfully created. I'm going to set that to hide because, well, I know it was created. I don't really need Bubble to tell me. So Honeybee, we'll put Honeybee in again. Oops, I've just done the exact same thing yet again, trying to copy and paste this. So we've got Honeybee, who is a pug. Uh, pug rating will set to zero. Description will paste in. Um, name will set to Honeybee. And one thing to bear in mind here, you know, a URL cannot have spaces in it. You've never seen google.com space slash, you know, search results or something. Uh, it's always going to be one line just like this um, all joined together. So you see how one more NCT test, which is the name of my bubble app, instead of having a space, I've got a hyphen. Well, similarly, when I'm creating a slug, it's good practice if I've got a, a space to just hyphenate it right here. So we'll hit create. Please wait where the entry's been created and that's done. Um, and now, you know, there's a few things you can do. You can hit this upload button to pull stuff in with the CSV, uh, which is a spreadsheet file. You can export your data if you really want to. Clearly, I'm just in a free plan at the minute on this demo account, so I've not got the option to do that. You can bulk modify stuff. Again, it's not on this current plan, but you do have all those kind of options here. Um, and you've got this concept of a, a primary field. If you haven't heard of a primary field before, it's a little bit like the unique IDs that we discussed in the databases fundamental and no code pillar. Um, essentially, it's just a, a primary field is a field which can uniquely identify a row in a database. So for every dog, you know, I could end up having two dogs. If we had a, if we had a platform where any user, you know, could put in a, their own dog, imagine how many dogs we're going to have with the same name, you know. Um, so as a result. You can't use necessarily rely on a user inputted field to uniquely identify that row. Therefore, you're probably going to give it a unique identifier. In Bubble, we call these primary fields, uh, or sometimes we'll call them primary keys, unique identifiers, whatever. Um, by using this field, you can just specify, do you have a unique ID field or do you want to use a field in there already? Unique ID is just automatically generated for you. So... With that done, we've essentially set up our dogs. Um, we've got our user here, which has got email by default, and we've got ratings. Essentially, that gives us everything that we need to go in our Rate My Doggy app. Um, you can continue to add more things. You can add uh, some defaults here. Like, for example, I could add zero as a default rating. And um, whenever I start to add a rating to this, uh, this database here, that's what would show up. Let me just walk you through a couple of the other options you've got here in Bubble. So first of all, you've got privacy. Now by default, all of these lists are um, counted as what we would call publicly visible, which means that users can see them. Um, you can set up various different rules here. I'm just gonna call this one new rule that essentially say, um, you know, users can either see this database or they can based on various different conditions. And this will let us um, essentially set up if statements so, you know, we can select current user or this current rating, i.e. the current own database. We can say the current user, if they are logged in, then they can see ratings. Uh, and you can also add more. You can do, like, if the current user is logged in and the current user, you know, is whatever, whatever you want to put in there, then you can just do that. Now, this functionality, we'll talk about it more in our workflows video because it is omnipresent throughout uh, Bubble. You can always use these kind of little variable uh, creation parts. Um, so we'll do that, but don't worry too much about this. It's an advanced field. You can use it if you really need it. Um, and Bubble itself has plenty of learning content about how it works. But essentially, that will just let you choose who can and can't see certain types of data within your app. Now, you also have um, option sets. Let me show you this as well. Just create that. Uh, so an option set is essentially kind of um, a way of storing key uh, key value pairs that you can then use later in different bubble visual components. So let's say you had um, a selection field where you wanted the users to be able to select between different elements. You can create this option set, call it whatever you like, you can hit create a new attribute and you've got attribute name and attribute type. Well, you and I know that that really means key value, so a key value pair. So I can put in here um, message. Uh, I can say that's going to be a piece of text and then I'll be able to specify, um, you know, what's actually in that uh, that option set. And then you can go ahead here, you can create new options. Um, so I'll create a new one, just call it that. Um, and then you can modify the attributes that come with it. So I can say, 
uh, clearly display names new one, I can say the message is, hello, this is me using a new option set. So you can create, you can have as many option sets as you like. Within each option, uh, option set, you can then have a series of options. Those are just key value pairs. And essentially this is just gonna let you store that key value data to use anywhere else in your app. One good way to use this is to store information for an API call. Um, if you want to just keep that in one nice, easy to edit place, then you can do that. Again, if this interface is a little bit tricky, don't worry about it too much. You know, it's not that commonly used. You definitely don't need to use it for every app you're going to build. Um, and, you know, if you do need to use it, chances are you're either going to have time to play around with it anyway, or you can dive into Bubble's specific content. And so with that in mind, let's finally look at the file manager. This one's pretty simple as well. It's just going to let you essentially store um, uploaded files. So uh, if you imagine there's a good chance you're going to have an app really popular, really busy, users are going to be uploading things, you know, imagine you were making something like Facebook where users can upload photos, well, all of those files are going to show up here, and that's good for two things, you know, number one, it means you can see what users are uploading, number two, it means you can, um, you know, uh, manage those files, delete them if you need to, it's also pretty good for moderation, if you've got something where users can upload literally anything, then I can guarantee you at some point a user will upload literally anything, um, you know, that could be something you don't want in your website or your app, therefore you might want to come in here, find it, delete it, do whatever you want. Now, one last thing to say, you've probably noticed uh, this little thing over here that says switch to live database and that shows up here as well. At the minute, we are in development mode of our bubble app. Now we can create different save points. So if I'm about to make a big change, I can make a save point that says, if I don't like that change, I can revert back later. It's the equivalent of saving the duplicate of a file on your computer before you go and make some major change to it. Um, but while we're in development environment, essentially we can go and preview our app, and I'll show you that in a second. But if we want to deploy it and make it something a customer can actually use, then we've got to put it to live. And so as a result, we have a test database, which is the one we're in active now, and we put all this plug information, Pomeranian information, SAMID information, and etc. Um, but when you switch to your live database, that's actually going to give you the real one that your customers or your users are putting information into. So it's pretty good because it means you can have a development version that's uh, you know that you're adding new features to, that you're testing out, you're playing with, and then you can have a live version. And so if you want to have a live version where you've got you know thousands of customers using it, and you want to have a second version that you can build more features on before they're released, that is how you do it. Um, and then just bringing us to the end of the video. Clearly we've got this boilerplate here. If I go into and hit this preview mode, it is going to let me open up my, um, oops, it's going to go ahead and let me open up my, uh, my demo version of the website and I'll be able to go ahead and try that out. Now I'm clicking the button. Why is this not working? Possibly because I've not made the right uh, changes yet. Let's just figure out what's went wrong there. So it should come up. If we check out, we've got one more NCT test app. So if I go, let's grab this URL and I'll just show you how this works. So I can manually put that in based on the name. So it's called one hyphen more hyphen NCT hyphen test hyphen app. So we will do right in here, one hyphen more hyphen NCT hyphen test hyphen app. And so the URL we're trying to go to here is one more, uh, so basically the, the name of Bubble Apps, so one more NCT test app dot bubble apps dot io slash version test. And that will essentially let us load up the previewed version of our Bubble App. And there you go. So you've got the boilerplate. Clearly that's what we've got here. It looks a lot bit different in preview, obviously. Um, but there you go. So usually that preview button will open it. If you find it's not working, just take your name there copy it into the URL bar, and there you go, you can start to test it. Now what we'll do, um, tune into the next video, we'll go ahead, we'll start to create a URL, or sorry, um, a user interface that looks like this, and then we'll be able to see that showing up here on the preview as we go. So watch the next video, and we'll dive into UI and UX.